Who gets to kill off your favorite character? Let's talk about chapter 6 for a little bit. Uh, this is one of my favorite chapters here. The playwright is considered the person who builds a story. And a term comes from a middle age, a right being somebody who builds. Now, the playwright is the first artist that is needed for a play to take place. And that's pretty much any story to take place needs the person who's going to write it. So when a play is being produced, somebody has to come up with a story, someone has to come up with the characters, somebody has to come up with what the situation is all about. And that person is the playwright in terms of a play. Of course, in terms of a book, it's the author. In terms of a movie, uh, it's the it's the writer. TV show, it's the writer. All right, but they're the first. Nothing else. Nothing can really happen until they write the story. Some other concepts in terms of playwriting. Uh, you can read through that. As a matter of fact, if you put in the uh, little extra credit for anybody who puts in first person to put in what a closed shop is or an open shop is open and closed union shop can you tell me what that is all right but also remember that a play can be copywritten and i'm sure you've seen that little c symbol with a circle around it that means something has been copyrighted and what that means is that anytime somebody else performs that play that playwright gets paid. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, consider it a residual income. What is that? Residual income. And that is what? What do you think residual income is? It's getting paid after you've done, done the work over and over and over again. So people like musicians, they'll write a song and every time that song is sung or produced, they get paid. Residual income, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. All right, that is August Wilson, a very famous playwright. He's actually in the banner of, of, the, web, of the website over in the, the, on the side next to the Lion King logo. That's a picture of August Wilson. The playwright establishes a theme what is the what are the ideas that the playwright wants to discuss and as a designer me personally that's what I that's what I look for when I'm reading a play that's what's going to help me to design what things are going to look like all right here's one of my favorite parts right here conflict remember that we were saying what about conflict you got to have conflict in order for there to be drama if there's no conflict there's no drama and the characters have to be in conflict for there to be drama all right so this really really cool formula desire plus obstacle times the lack of compromise equals the level of conflict so what that means is a character wants something. A character has a desire. That character is going to run into an obstacle. So either an obstacle that's trying to literally stop the character or an obstacle that's just in the way. Like, for example, the difference between somebody pushing you so that you can't get to your goal and there being a brick wall in the way so that you have to climb over to get over to your goal all right so you multiply that by how much that character or both characters or both either the character or the obstacle is willing to compromise and you have conflict 
<clears throat> excuse me. So if you have, so let's say, for example, we're going to do a play about this class and you are the main character. You have a desire to get an A in this class, but lo and behold, I am in your way. I am your obstacle. And I refuse to give anybody an A in the class. And so, because I because I have no, I don't. I'm not going to compromise, and you're not going to compromise. You're going to insist that you get an A, and I'm going to insist that I'm not going to give out any A's. We're going to have a major conflict, right? So, especially if your tuition is at stake or let's say my reputation as a teacher is at stake or or you know there's 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 money involved whatever that may be that our lack of compromise is going to create a large conflict but let's say you have a desire to get an A you got to get an A and I am still your obstacle and I will not I will not give out any A's. If your desire, if your if you decide to compromise and your desire shifts to be like, "Oh, you know what? I guess a B is going to be okay." You've just you've just compromised decided to compromise your what your desire original desire was and that reduces the level of conflict cuz now it's like, "Oh, okay. Well, since you're not going to fight for an A, then you know, you'll get you'll get the B. You've changed your desire, and now the conflict has been reduced. Now you can see right there that if you're watching a play and the characters are, are always compromising, it's not going to be any fun to watch, right? You want to have something that has some extra conflict, some drama to it. You know, that's what gets that's what gets us interested in in what we're going to see. All right. Very cool stuff. Some text about playwrights, vocabulary words. Now, playwrights also write in in genres, and that's a it's a type of style that a play is in. We're probably going to go in, into that a little bit more detail later, but just thinking about it in terms of categories, so. For example, music has a bunch of different genres, so you can have hip hop and and classical and house music and rock and roll. You can even have subgenres of hip hop, so you can have trip hop and and hip hop down south hip hop, west coast with hip hop. All of those are different genres and plays have different genres as well all right something that you want to make sure that you're able to distinguish between a story and a plot the story is when some is is saying what happens in the play or in the story uh, chronologically so this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and this happens. Plot is what brings it together, and you're and you're concentrating on what everything means. So, so you're dealing more along the lines of the meaning of of all the different events that are happening. So that's going to be your plot. All right, here's when it starts to getting interesting. When you are writing a story, there is what's most commonly known as a formula plot. And a formula plot is a system of writing a story that that is very specific and we're going to go into that right now 
So a formula plot starts with the beginning. It's going to have a middle and it's going to have an ending. All right, so your story is going to have a beginning, middle, and ending. In the beginning part are all these different items. So you're going to have the exposition. That's the stuff that happens before the story starts. So let's say you're watching a TV show and the TV show starts with somebody sitting down at the restaurant. The exposition is the information that you get that happens before the person walks into and sits down at the restaurant. Uh, protagonist and antagonist. Make sure you check out the the blog posts on on the differences between those two. The event is our what what sets up our situation. What makes it what makes things kind of strange. Uh, disturbance is what is the thing that's happening that that sets that puts the ball into motion. So something disrupts the world and gets the story started. Point of attack is somebody has to make a decision about the disturbance that just took place. So make sure that when you answer that question you have a decision that's being made. And the major dramatic question is usually determined by that point of attack where you, you want to know there's a, there's a question that you want to know the answer to that permeates the entire story. So will the girl, will the, will the guy get the girl in the end is an example of a major dramatic question. Okay, now in the middle comes these parts. Rising action, conflicts, crisis, complication, and dark moment. So in a story, the rising action starts to build and build. That basically means the things that are happening become more and more important for that character to reach their goal. That's the rising action. But then they come into a conflict. A conflict is who that that character is fighting against. So conflicts in general are going to be man versus man, man versus nature or God, man versus society, man versus themselves. So those are the major kind of conflicts. And then you can be specific in terms of the play that you're reading. So it could be Joe versus versus Smith or Joe versus nature or volcano. All right, then you have the crisis. Crisis and conflict, but the crisis is gonna be an element that's trying to stop the main character from accomplishing their goal. The complication is when an element in the story is only is not trying to literally stop the the main character, but a, makes the main character slow down in a sense. So let's say I do in a story and I'm and and I just robbed the bank. The cops are after me and they're shooting at me and. I am in a state of crisis because the cops are tr literally trying to stop me. But if I run out of gas, that's a complication because the car isn't trying to stop me from getting my goal, but because it ran out of gas, it, it made things more difficult. So that's the complication. And then the dark moment is the worst par part of the, the story, the situation that you're in where it looks really bad for the hero. And then in the last part comes the, in the end, the enlightenment, that dark moment from the middle has to have a solution. And that enlightenment is when that light bulb goes on. It's like, oh, okay, now I, feel, now I see how, how this solution is gonna be solved. The climax is how, we do, how the characters go about solving that issue and then the denouement is when everything gets resolved and that's the end of the story all right so that is it for this lesson and i will talk to you later take care and god bless